Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. The situation of morphemes being the smallest unit of meaning is, of course, that's the standard definition in English. But sometimes uh, that definition does is not straightforwardly helpful. Let me clarify what I mean. For example, the word receive and conceive, right? So you can already probably think of other words like perceive and deceive. You see that the morpheme sieve appears in all of them. And you know that these are also morphemes, like re, you see re, can, per. So you can see these in other words as well. So you already have the feeling that, of course, they are two different morphemes. Of course, deceive consists of two different morphemes, but it's not easy to know what sieve means, right? Well, the easiest way is just to go to a dictionary that has an etymology part and look up the word. And this comes from Latin and or French. And you can know what it meant in those languages. But if you remember, I said that is not relevant to the current speakers of the language. So in order for something to be morpheme, it has to be a discrete unit, which also has a meaning. So um, the meaning that this this morpheme had in French or Latin is not relevant to to the English speaker because that would be a historical thing. But it is relevant in the sense that we already know that there is a pattern here. So everybody would probably think that oh there is some meaning here. So in, in words like receive, conceive, perceive, or even you see prescribe, you see like you all already know that uh, scribe is probably a morpheme. Other examples are describe, proscribe, transcribe, and subscribe to this channel. Oh, inscribe, one of my favorite words. So if you go to a dictionary and to the etymology part, you will find out, you can look up the etymology and find out what it meant. But that historical meaning from that historical language, or whatever language this was borrowed from, is not directly present. But we already see this morpheme appear in different words in English. So it gives us the perception of meaning. But in every, it doesn't seem to have the same meaning in every case, like deceive and perceive, uh, conceive, you receive, you know. So we have two things here. First, we know that it must mean something. Second, in every case, the meaning can be uh, interpreted differently depending on context. So the meaning here depends on the context in the sense that and the context here is what comes before or probably in some cases after it. Their meaning depends on the morphological context. What morpheme comes before or after it? This is one thing. And because they have this relation to etymology and you can find it out through the history of the word, which is not directly present, but it has to do something with history. So because of this, these, so because of this, they are called etymemes. So these morphemes are etymemes. Okay, so these are still morphemes because the question is we are counting some, we are counting morphemes here, right? So in this case, we know it means something, it must mean something. It appears in different words. The meaning depends on the morphological context and the exact meaning you can find out through the etymological history. Scribe in this sense means write, probably. But for example, when you say describe, this is really, it could be an oral description, right? Or maybe in proscribe, you see, proscribe. 
the, the meaning of proscribe is to denounce or condemn or prohibit. It hasn't, doesn't have anything to do with writing. So in a sense, you see, it depends on the phonological, morphological context or transcribe, subscribe. So you get the idea, right? I can give you more examples. Remit, like the, this morpheme. Permit, admit, see, transmit, and commit. Going back to the question, let's count as some morphemes. Prescribe, yes, is two morphemes. The second morpheme is an etymeme. So two, two, all of these are two. Thanks for your time and attention. And see you again soon.